The Dollar Tree, known for its thrill of the hunt shopping experience and unparalleled value. But if I'm gonna be honest, $1.25 for a makeup product leaves me with so many unanswered questions. Is it bad quality? Is it expired? Will it even show up on the skin? And can it potentially harm me? So many questions. In today's video, I went to the Dollar Tree and I stocked up on a full face of makeup products in order to test out and to show you what's okay, what's great, and what's absolute trash. The results? They're gonna really surprise you. Let's go. I can't believe how much makeup there is here. Water. I think we're good. Dum -dum. <laughs> the first awesome find is this ice roller. I know this isn't makeup, but listen, this is awesome and it's a steal of a price. So all you have to do is pop this tool into your freezer and use it whenever you're feeling puffy. Just like you ice a muscle on your body that is wounded, icing your face does the same thing for it, okay? It reduces inflammation and redness by constricting the blood vessels and reducing swelling. This is very good for people with irritated skin, like people who you know struggle with acne or have eczema or rosacea. And it's also good for people who tend to get puffy in the morning. The reason that I'm excited about this one in particular is because it's so nice and small and it's super lightweight. It's basically perfect for getting like under the eyes, right? Where we tend to get puffy, especially as we get older. This is definitely a great find. The next product is a beauty blender. Applying your foundation with a beauty blender really is the best way to apply it. Stippling with a beauty blender gives you the most seamless end result by a landslide, okay? It's faster, the finish is way more airbrushed looking and it's easier because you don't get streaks in your face from the brushes that you then have to blend away. The way that you use a beauty blender is by running it under water and opening and closing it several times. When you do this, it's going to puff up to about double its size and it's gonna become really, really soft. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people use this tool dry and it's not the right way to use it. Every time I'm at my friend's house and they're getting ready, they're using this dry and I'm like, no, it's not the right way to use it, okay? If you use it puffy and moist, it will be an absolute game changer for you. Also, just to do a price comparison here, a beauty blender at Sephora costs 27 Canadian dollars. That's roughly 20 American dollars. As a makeup artist that's been doing this for 17 years, I can tell you with absolute certainty that the $20 one is no different than the $1.25 one. And I have tried both several times. The application is exactly the same, despite the marketing telling you otherwise. Okay, <laughs> trust me, don't waste your money and buy the expensive one. This one is great. The next product is this adorable pineapple beauty blender holder. I love this, okay? I love this because I find that if you throw your beauty blender in your makeup bag, it can get really dirty and grimy if there's no protection around it. Having a little case for it is perfect. The only thing that I don't like about this one is that it doesn't have any holes. So repeatedly storing a damp beauty blender in an enclosed space without any ventilation is going to breed bacteria, right? So if you're using a storage case like this one, or if you buy this one, I think it's a good idea to let the blender sit out for a bit and dry before putting it in here, which is kind of a hassle, right? It's a bit of a hassle. If this had holes, it would be a great find, like a stellar find, because it's really good quality. But because it doesn't have holes, I'm going to put it in our okay find category. The next product is this eyeshadow switching sponge. I bet a lot of people haven't heard about this, but it's a great product to have if you're a makeup lover. When you're using your shadows on your brush and then you wanna to switch to another color, you just rub your brush on the sponge and it will clean it so that the previous color you're using doesn't muddy up the next color you're going to use. Honestly, it is so simple, but it's brilliant. If you play around with a lot of eye looks, you really love makeup, then you should definitely definitely get one of these. Sigma actually has a much fancier version of this product and it's called the Sigma Switch, which I also have. And that product retails for $26. So this is obviously a much more simple version of that, but it does essentially the exact same thing. It will give you the same end result, but it just does it on a budget. Okay, the next product I wanna test out for you are foundations. Okay, so I bought three. There were actually so many different ones. I bought three of them. I bought the Le Mercerie. I bought the LA Colors Liquid Makeup, 
and I bought the Cosmic Colors Liquid Foundation. I tested all three on myself. La Mercerie is by far the worst one. This one is extremely patchy, has a really patchy consistency, very weird. LA Makeup wasn't patchy, but it was extraordinarily sheer. I would say that you're looking like BB cream sheer for this, so I wouldn't really consider it to be a foundation. And then Cosmic Colors, was significantly better. This one's more of a medium coverage foundation. It was not patchy. It blended out very well. This could almost pass as like a higher end foundation if you didn't know it was from Dollar Tree. If it was packaged in like a NARS bottle and sold at Sephora, you wouldn't question it. It looked really, really good on my skin. But of course, there are limitations, okay? So the first limitation that I noticed was the size. So this is 15 mils. So I did a little bit of research and the foundations that you're buying at the drugstore, so the inexpensive drugstore foundations, they're 30 mils. So this is half of a drugstore foundation. So this is more of like a sample size product. Even with that though, if you double the cost, it's gonna be $2.50. So your 30 mil size, if you buy this, it's still $2.50. You really can't find a drugstore foundation for less than like $10 at the cheapest if it's on sale. So that still makes that really good. Another limitation is color selection. All right, we are looking at extremely limited color selection. It's like an absolute miracle that I found my color, but there were not a lot of colors. And for some reason, all the colors are like my color. So there were no darker colors and there were not really any fair colors either. So you kind of need to be like a medium skin tone. If you guys have gone to the Dollar Tree and looked at foundations, is that the case for all of you? I don't know if it was just a location thing, but I doubt it because it was the same for all of the foundations. All of the foundations were kind of like a light medium skin tone color. I did do some digging for you though. And I saw that you can get the e.l.f. Flawless Satin Finish Foundation at Ulta for $3 and it's a 20 mil bottle. I really love e.l.f. even though I I haven't tried that one to be like completely honest. I haven't, but if it was up to me, if it was between this one or one of these and the e.l.f. one for the same amount of money-ish, I would get the e.l.f. one. The e.l.f. e.l.f. is actually a really nice brand. I use a lot of their products and they're incredibly inexpensive. So when it comes to foundations, even though this one is okay, this one could go into the okay category, most of these are trash, so I would avoid that. The next product I found is this Be Pure Hydrating Under Eye Concealer. I had high hopes for this because the color, even though again, very limited color se selection, for whatever reason, the color was like perfect for me. I was like, yay. This would be an amazing find if it worked really well because there's 12 mils here. So this is quite a large concealer. Like this would last a very long time. I love that it's also specifically for under eye and it's a serum style concealer. So it's kind of like a very hydrating treatment style concealer product. This is actually pretty impressive. The formulation is super creamy. It has some light reflecting properties to it. It is not at all patchy. And I found that it didn't really crease either. The one limitation with this is that I have extremely dark under eye circles. So I need a very intense brightening concealer that's very full coverage. This is not full coverage. This is a light to medium coverage. It's a little bit sheer, it's hydrating. It has brightening properties, but not enough for someone like me with that really blue under eye skin. This would be a great find if you need a little bit of brightening, but not too much. Moving on to brows. So we have another LA Colors. A lot of these are LA Color products. They had a brow pencil. Now, what I really like about this one is that you get a spoolie on one side. You guys know you need a brow spoolie if you're doing anything with your brows, it is essential and then you have your pencil on the other side. Now, the thing that I didn't love about this brow pencil is that it's kind of chalky. I don't like a really waxy, dense brow pencil, but because I have 
like no brows. I need more than this for my brows. I need something that is more pigmented when it comes to my pencil. And then of course I need all of my brow waxes and gels with the fibers to build up the hair. I really don't have brows, so I need more help. <laughs> but if you do have brows, then this will work just fine. So I'm just gonna put this in our okay category. Bronzer, okay, look at this teeny tiny little bronzer. So what I've been noticing is that a lot of these are travel size, okay? This is like a travel size little bronzer it is very nice it shows up it is pigmented this would work really well as a bronzy eyeshadow actually I'm definitely gonna keep this the one thing that I don't love about it is that it has iridescence to it It has some light reflecting pigment like particles to it I prefer a matte bronzer on the skin I don't like it when the face looks glittery or shiny unless it's very intentionally done on the cheekbone but some people do so for that reason it's good $1.25 it's a nice color, it's not too warm, it's not too cool. I would say this is a great find. This is a great find. You can use this in a lot of different ways. If you like bronzy eye looks, this would be a great color for that. Okay, I'm excited for you to see this one. This one is my favorite of the whole lot. This is a great, great find. So this is the LA Colors Contour Stick. This is so unbelievably similar to the NYX Highlight and Contour Stick that I am obsessed with. I use it on all of my clients. I use it on myself every day. Very similar product, except it doesn't have the highlight side. I also really love this as a eyeshadow, like crease color. I used it there. And I even used it as a lip liner. This is a beautiful nude lip liner. $1.25, the NYX one is $14. Great find, yay. Okay, now I have to admit that I am an eyeshadow snob. I never, never use inexpensive shadows because I like two things. I like pigment payoff. I need it to be pigmented and I absolutely hate fallout. Fallout drives me crazy. So I was very hesitant about these, very hesitant. The colors are very nice. I bought two colors. The pinkish one is called Water Lily and then this orangey, very warm one is called Desert Rose. I swatched both of them on my hand but I used Desert Rose in the look. I was shook. <laughs> these are very good, very good. They are incredibly pigmented. They blend it out like a dream. Um, the metallic shades are truly metallic. They don't fall all over your face. I wore it for the whole day. I found that it lasted on the, on the eyes really, really well. I actually like this significantly better, significantly better than the Makeup by Mario Master Metallics palette, which I bought. It was $50 at Sephora and I was incredibly disappointed. Those shadows were very dusty, very hard to use, very hard to blend. These, <laughs> are not this is a great find run run now go buy these this on the other hand was not so impressive this is cosmic color so cosmic colors did okay in the foundation right but it did not do well in the eye pencil so this is an eyeliner eyebrow pencil hybrid it doesn't glide at all it doesn't feel waxy it feels powdery which is often the case with eyebrow pencils so maybe that's why they made it that way to make it powdery for the brows but on the last line it's very hard to use I found that I got more success with it when I put it on an angled brush and I worked my angled brush across my lid because it was dragging because it's not that velvety texture but even with the angled brush I just found I couldn't get it deep enough it's a pass okay this one is trash just throw this out don't even buy it it's not gonna work for you it's just not very good another trash product is this one again by cosmic colors oh you're letting me down cosmic colors i had such high hopes for you it's the ultimate length mascara oh gosh this is so bad okay so for one it does not lengthen nor does it thicken it just does nothing another thing that is incredibly concerning about it is that it has an extremely strong smell. Hey, what's that smell? I don't know if it's fragrance. It does smell like fragrance, but it smells like cheap fragrance. Like it is, this is very bad too. Very bad, trash, 
trash. The LA Colors Lip Gloss. So I love the color of this. Isn't it pretty? It is like the perfect peach. When I put it on my lips, the formulation feels very nice. It is shiny and smooth and glossy. It gives a sheer finish of color. So it's a nice wash of color that's not overpowering. It looked great on top of this LA Colors contour stick. Like this combination was very pretty. Do you guys like it in the footage? What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you like it. The one thing I don't like about this is that it smells strong but it smells cheap I don't know how else to explain it you know when something doesn't smell high-end it smells like bubble gum but like like a fragrant version of bubble like a fake bubble gum so if it didn't have that smell I would make it a great find I'd probably buy in all the colors but I hate the smell so much that's the one reason why I wouldn't get it again in terms of the visual effect of it it's nice. Am I gonna use it again? Sure, I think I will. I have another great find for you. Yay, okay, so this is the Ioni blush. Guys, how adorable is this packaging? When I saw this, I was like, what is this brand? This is so cute. This is giving Benefit blush to a T, okay? This is literally the Benefit blush, but a cheaper version. So as you can see, it's cheaply made, right? Like the little square isn't even lined up perfectly on the base and it's significantly smaller, okay? You're, you're probably getting a third of the amount of product that you get from Benefit, but I love that it's got its little magnetic closure. It's super little. It's very pigmented, very pigmented. It showed up beautifully on the skin, blended out beautifully. It's a dream of a price, right? If you like the Benefit blushes, you'll die. You'll love this. The Benefit blushes are $18 at Sephora. This is $1.25. This is very nice. And what I loved the most about this is that they had a bunch of colors and some of the colors were very like in. They have like a bright bubblegum pink that I was very tempted to buy, but I wanted to test this one out first and I wanted it to go, I wanted to buy a peach one to go with the peach gloss so that it was more of a monochromatic vibe. The makeup look didn't look too crazy, but I think I'm going to go back and get the hotter pink one because that's that's very trendy right now that color and i mean the formula was fantastic and you can't beat the price and like look at for your makeup kit you can stack these like they're so little they're perfect love 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 this one's great speaking of ioni i am actually wearing them again today they also have lashes these lashes are legit these lashes are legit some of them were a little too bold for my liking i don't like huge crazy lashes like huge crazy spider lashes i did find a beautiful natural lash from my only lashes that lifts it's also 3d faux mink so it's quite fluffy I love that. You can get a lot of foaming lashes at Sephora, at Ulta, at Walmart, but they are significantly more expensive. So I looked one up here. The Faux Mink Lily Lashes at Sephora are $24. These are extremely similar. I've bought Lily Lashes so many times. You know, I've bought the high-end lashes. They look beautiful in the packaging because the packaging is so luxurious, but when you put them on your eyes, you cannot tell the difference. Honest to God, nine times out of 10, you can't. 3D Faux Mink for $1.25, you can't beat that. So this is a great, great find. The white liner, so I had to grab this. I thought it was brilliantly packaged. So why do you need a white liner? Okay, I use white liners when I want to open up small eyes. You can use a white liner in the inner waterline. Don't do it every day. It's not good for your eyes, but for a special event or for a certain look, you know, you can do it. This is also nice and creamy, so you can apply it on the brow bone up in here. If you want to give yourself a little brow lift illusion, you can apply it on the inside in here to brighten the tear duct and then just blend it out. This will blend out nicely it's nice and creamy great find and let's wrap it up with the worst product of the day this one's going straight into the trash bin straight into the trash bin and it is the color co aura glow i had such high hopes for this i saw this when i was just about to leave the store and i just like grabbed it. i'm like this is going to be a great find um these highlighter sticks are great i have one by chanel 
I have actually a few from different brands, but the one by Chanel, the Balm Essential is fantastic. Um, you just apply it on your cheekbone and it gives you this little spot of light on your cheekbone. I really thought that this was gonna be like that and it is absolutely not. This has the weirdest consistency ever. It's almost like dry, but also chalky. Like it goes on chalky, which is, how is a highlighter chalky? Like, I don't understand. It also stinks. It, I think that's a theme among some of these products. The smell is bad. This smells like a mixture of intense baby powder mixed with like chemicals. I would, I wouldn't trust this product. Just toss it, toss it. It's so bad. Here is the completed look. I did not substitute a single product here. Every single thing used in this look was from the dollar store. When I look at the footage, I can tell you that under the eyes could have definitely been brighter. The liner could have been darker and creamier. The brows could have been much better. They could have been defined much, much better. But considering that every single product, every single one was from the Dollar Tree, I think it looks pretty good. Most importantly though, I think that we found some big wins here, some huge budget friendly wins that I I will definitely be going and restocking. And the ones that didn't work, the trash items, I mean, it's not like they cost us a lot anyway, right? If you want me to do an entire Dollar Tree hair haul, there's a whole aisle, you guys, with hair accessories, barrettes, clips, shampoos, hair gels. If you want me to do this video again, but with my hair, then definitely let me know in the comment section below. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up. I always love making the videos that I know you guys want to see. This video's over.